Good afternoon. In my sermon this past Sunday, I said that Christ's Lordship does not depend on us allowing him to be Lord. I'd like to explain a bit today what I meant by that. For many people, the definition of a Christian is someone who says Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. That, for example, is one of the membership vows of the Presbyterian Church. Who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And by the way, if you join us for worship this Sunday, we'll be receiving another member who will be making this vow. Romans chapter 10 also lets us know how important it is to say that Jesus is Lord. There we read, If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And 1 Corinthians chapter 12 puts it this way, No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So acknowledging Jesus as Lord is certainly important for us. It's important for our spiritual health and for our salvation. Saying that Jesus is Lord is important because of what it means for us, not because of what it means for Jesus. The reality is, Jesus is already Lord, and he always will be Lord. As I preached on Sunday, he has ascended into the place of authority in heaven, and from there, he rules over and cares for all of creation and all of humanity. So, if Jesus is Lord of all creation and Lord of all humanity, then that means he is already Lord of your life. When you make the decision to claim Jesus as Lord, that doesn't mean you're making him Lord. It means you're acknowledging the reality. Jesus no doesn't come to us and say, please make me your Lord. No, Jesus comes to us and says, I am you, your Lord. Do you want to get with the program? Philippians chapter 2 looks forward to the time when at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Notice, it doesn't tell us the time will come that Jesus will become Lord, because the Father has already highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name. That's the reality. That's the way the world is operating. What we're looking forward to is the time when everyone realizes that and everyone celebrates that. Now, some people today recognize and acknowledge and celebrate the reality of Jesus' lordship. They understand, at least to some extent, because none of us can fully understand it, but they understand at least to some extent the authority that Jesus has over us all. Now, I'm even open to the idea that some people may recognize Jesus' lordship even if they call him by a different name. But remember, Jesus' lordship does not mean he, has, he imposes his authority upon us. Philippians chapter 2 makes that very clear. The reason why Jesus has authority over us as Lord is because he humbled himself to the point of death. He completely emptied himself in love so that he might redeem a fallen and broken world. To say that Jesus is Lord is to gratefully receive what he offers. It means placing ourselves under his care. It means recognizing that as we seek and follow his will, our lives will be more blessed than they could be otherwise. Now, that doesn't mean life won't be perfect. It doesn't even mean that life will be easy. Even after we claim Jesus as Lord, we may wonder where he is as we go through the struggles and confusions of life. But with Jesus as Lord, overall, our lives will have meaning and purpose and will be marked with faith, hope, love, peace, and joy. Now, there are those who don't recognize or acknowledge Christ's Lordship. Perhaps they're unaware of it. Perhaps they don't understand it. Perhaps they've consciously refused to accept his Lordship. Now, in this case, that doesn't mean Jesus is not Lord over their lives. They may be actively resisting that lordship. 
They may be trying to lord over their own life. They might be seeking other lords instead of Jesus, but he is still Lord for them. That's what Paul was like when Jesus spoke to him in a vision as he was traveling to Damascus. Now, at that point in his life, Paul had been working against Christ's followers. In other words, he was resisting and actively fighting against Jesus' lordship. So when Jesus appeared to him, he said, It hurts you to kick against the goads. A goad, by the way, is a cattle prod. It hurts you because you're kicking against the way that I'm trying to guide you. Jesus was seeking to lead Paul in a certain way, and he suffered because he resisted that leading. Jesus was still Lord of his life, even though he didn't want him to. What about you? Is Jesus Lord of, what about you? Jesus is Lord of your life, whether you acknowledge it or not. The question is, will you accept it and receive the blessing that he seeks to offer? Or will you resist his lordship and keep getting stuck by a cattle prod? Would you pray with me, please? Jesus, when we call you Lord, we acknowledge your authority over our lives. And we gratefully celebrate the kind of Lord that you are, not one who imposes your will upon us, but your Lord who seeks what is best for us. So help us, Lord, each day in a little bit of a clearer sense. Help us understand what it means to call you Lord. And help us to follow as you guide us. Amen. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk again later.